Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back for another video. In this video, I show you how I built a new TV stand for our living room. Now, I did a more in-depth series of videos on this particular build. If you're interested in that version of this build, then I will leave those videos linked in the description box below. However, for this video, I combined each of those four separate videos into one shorter video that covers the basics of this whole build from start to finish. Alrighty then, let's get into it. To build the base of this TV stand, I started by ripping down a sheet of 3 quarter inch sanded maple plywood until I had all of my desired pieces cut to size. I cut them a little bit bigger than I needed to start and then I trimmed everything to its final size on the table saw and then the miter saw. Then it was time to get this base assembled. Now, what I didn't show here was me going ahead and painting each of the pieces beforehand. I just feel like that makes it a little bit easier than trying to paint it all once it's assembled. To assemble this TV stand base, I just used some wood glue and pocket hole screws to join everything together. I also used some right angle clamping squares which just helped me make sure I was keeping everything square as I was assembling. This will be helpful down the line when it comes time to adding some cabinet doors to this thing. To keep my spacing even, I just used some scrap wood to cut some spacer blocks that I could clamp my pieces up against to give me even spaces for each opening in the cabinet. Once I had my divider pieces lined up perfectly, I added some wood glue and attached them with pocket hole screws. Then I had to cut down some quarter inch material to be used as a backing for this TV stand. With my back pieces cut, I drilled some 2 inch holes in each piece to allow all of the wires for my electronics to feed through. With the bottom row fully assembled, I could add the middle shelf to this thing. To do that, I set it in place and lined it up making sure it was level and then I sank some pocket hole screws into the sides. Then I repeated the same steps as I did with the bottom row. I just used some scrap wood cut to the size of the opening that I wanted and I glued and screwed my divider pieces into place. From there, I just needed to add my top and back support pieces. I just attached those with some wood glue and pocket hole screws as well. I also decided to add a few more support pieces to the bottom of this thing to prevent it from sagging in the middle. Then it was time to add a face frame to this TV stand cabinet. To do that, I cut some 1x3 poplar boards to size and then I attached the face frame piece by piece to my cabinet using some wood glue and brad nails. Then I decided to add a little extra trim detail to the sides of the cabinet as well. Mm -hmm. 
Then I filled all my brad nail holes with some wood filler and then sanded and prepped this TV stand for paint. I sprayed a couple of additional coats of paint on this TV stand in a color called Tricorn Black from Sherwin-Williams. With that, the base of this TV stand was mostly complete and I got to work on making the epoxy river top. To get started, I took a walnut slab that I had already prepared for this top by removing all of the bark from the live edges. Then I found the center point of my slab on each end and I cut it right down the middle. Once my slab was cut in half, I inverted the sides and was starting to get an idea for how this river table was going to look. Then I cut down my slab pieces to a more desirable size on the miter saw. Then I ripped down a sheet of melamine board to use as a form for my epoxy pour. I got everything cut to size that I needed and then I worked on getting all of the pieces wrapped in some Tyvek tape. Now this stuff just helps keep the epoxy from sticking to my mold. I also drilled some pocket holes into my side pieces to help me assemble the mold together. To seal up my mold, I applied some black silicone caulking to all of my seams and took some time to make sure everything was sealed up good and tight. I also made sure that my mold was completely level before pouring my epoxy. To prevent a bunch of epoxy leaking underneath my slab pieces, I used some scrap blocks of wood to clamp the pieces down tight in the mold. Then it was time to mix up my epoxy. Now for this pour, I went with some thick pour epoxy from Liquid Glass. This type of epoxy would allow me to pour the whole thing at once rather than doing it in layers. For this particular epoxy, I had to mix the epoxy resin and hardener in a two to one ratio for about eight minutes, and then I could add in some color. Now I mixed the epoxy using a mixer drill attachment, and then I added in my colored pigment from Black Diamond Pigments, and made sure to fully mix that in as well. Then it was time to pour the epoxy into my mold. I just slowly poured the epoxy in, checking for leaks along the way and popping air bubbles in between each layer I poured.
after letting the epoxy cure for 72 hours, it was time to get the river table removed from the mold. I removed all of the pocket hole screws and then worked on getting it out of the mold. Luckily, the Tyvek tape did a really good job of keeping the river table from sticking to the mold. With the epoxy river top cured, it was time to get it cleaned up and flushed with the wood. To do this, I used a router sled to run my router over the top using a one inch surfacing bit. I made several slow passes along the top until I had it totally flush. I then trimmed the top to the final size I needed to sit on top of my TV stand base. Then I spent a lot of time sanding this top to make sure to minimize the scratches in the epoxy. I used some mesh sandpaper with my sander attached to my vacuum. Having the least amount of dust created when sanding helps prevent putting more scratches in the epoxy. I started at 180 grit to sand out the ridge lines from using the router sled, and then I worked my way up to 180 grit, making sure to water pop in between some of the grits. I then gave all the edges an eighth inch round over, and then it was finally time to get some finish on this thing. To finish this tabletop, I applied two coats of Rubio Monocoats Oil Plus 2C in Pure. This was actually the first time I had used this particular finish and I was super happy with how easy it was to apply and how the top looked after just two coats. Then one of the last things I had to do for this TV stand was get some glass cabinet doors made for it. To start, I ripped down some 1x4 poplar boards to construct the frame of my doors. Then to join my boards together to make the frame of my door, I used a doweling jig to cut some holes for dowels to help add some strength to each of my four corners. Then I inserted some 3 8 inch fluted dowel pins into each of the holes that I drilled and glued and clamped the frame of my doors together. Next, I needed to rabbit out a section for my glass insert. To do this, I used a half inch rabbiting bit in my plunge router and I ran it along the interior frame of the back side of each of my doors. Then I used this little tool from Milescraft to chisel out a square corner for each of the four corners of my doors. From there, I went ahead and installed my door hinges. These are going to be inset cabinet doors, so I'm using concealed inset hinges here.
Then I used some playing cards to get an even gap reveal for each of my doors. Once I had them installed, if there was any adjusting I needed to do, I could make those adjustments on the hinges themselves. Then it was time to install my glass inserts. I had some glass cut to size for these doors and then I installed them into my rabbited out section and I held them in place using some glass retainer clips that I picked up off of Amazon. I placed one of them in each of my corners and I added a few extra in the middle for added support. Then I went ahead and added some knobs to each of my doors and these things were now complete. Then it was time to get our old TV stand removed so we could bring the new one in. This is also where I realized how horrible I was at dusting the old one. Disgusting. With the new TV stand in place, I set about hooking all of the electronics up again and feeding all of the wires through the back of the TV stand. Once I had everything mostly hooked up, I could work on getting the epoxy river top attached to the base. To attach the top, I just screwed some screws through some figure eight clips that were attached to the top of the base. And with that, this TV stand was now completely done. I'm really happy with the way this thing turned out. I was able to tackle a lot of firsts with this project, which I think just helped me become a better builder overall. That is sort of my goal with every project that I do. I just enjoy making stuff and it's always cool to learn some new things and get better with each new build. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give this video a like and consider subscribing to my channel. If you wanna see me tackle this build in a little more detail, then I'll leave a playlist at the end of the video where you can check out all of the previous videos I put out for this build. I will also link all of the products that I used in this video in the description box. As always, thanks so much for watching guys. I'll be seeing you all soon for my next DIY. Bye.